Warren Buffett is back with some more sage advice for the crypto community. Just kidding, it's the usual FUD. This week, he called Bitcoin a delusion that attracts charlatans, making this accusatory statement amid his own current investment issues with Kraft Heinz. EOS has also been hit by some troubles, with $7.7 .7 million moved from a blacklisted account due to an apparently failed update by an EOS block producer. Also this week, Nasdaq launches Bitcoin and Ethereum indexes, the JPM coin could have retail use, Coinbase hires fascists, and Facebook might be launching its own crypto. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Molly Jane, and this is your weekly Hodler's Digest. Let's take a look at the markets. Nasdaq has launched its first two crypto indexes, the Bitcoin and Ethereum liquid indexes, both provided by crypto-focused market data company Brave New Coin. According to the announcement, the indexes will show reference rates for the price of one Bitcoin and one Ether quoted in USD and refreshed every 30 seconds. According to Brave New Coin, the index's methodology meets the standards of the International Organization of Securities Commissions. As Frank Strainer, CEO of BNC, pointed out, the indexes were born out of a growing need for clarity and transparency in crypto asset pricing, which are among the main concerns for institutional investors. From now on, prices of the two major cryptocurrencies will appear on the screens of offices and trade floors around the globe, together with those of other fiat currencies and traditional commodities. The implementation of the indexes by a major institutional player such as NASDAQ is deemed to give a strong boost to cryptocurrency adoption. According to a statement by Brave New Coin, a Ripple index is also set to be launched soon. After months of speculation, it is now official. Samsung has confirmed that its new flagship phone, the Galaxy S10, will contain a number of crypto-related features, among which was the much-rumored private key storage system. According to an official announcement, the Galaxy S10 is built with defense-grade Samsung Knox, a hardware security feature capable of hosting private keys for blockchain-enabled mobile services. Announced at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona 2019 on Monday, the Galaxy S10 will offer online storage of Bitcoin and Ethereum, as well as Cosmo, a cosmetics industry-related token, and Engine, a popular coin among gamers. The company also announced that the phone will support decentralized applications. Samsung is the biggest smartphone brand to embrace crypto, following the example of Sirian Labs' Finny phone and HTC's Exodus One, both coming with incorporated crypto wallets. Crypto startup Pundi X is also following the trend with a new smartphone capable of switching between traditional and blockchain mode. Chinese giant Huawei also showed its interest in crypto, implementing Blockchain.com's crypto wallet in its app gallery. While only a minority of users are likely to use its blockchain-related features, Samsung's crypto integration is likely to have a significant impact in making crypto more mainstream. And even though the integration of mobile devices and blockchain technology is still at its early stage, many have noticed its revolutionary potential. As HTC's decentralized chief officer, Phil Chen, pointed out, blockchain smartphones could become a means to store users' digital identities, preventing big tech companies from exploiting and monetizing them. Jamie Dimon has hinted that the JPM coin could have retail use one day. Recently, JP Morgan Chase announced plans to launch its own digital asset in a major banking first. It was an effort to increase settlement efficiency. The JPM coin will at first focus on international settlements by major corporations in order to help speed up transactions. They currently take a day or longer using exit options such as SWIFT. The JPM coin has been met with both support and opposition in the crypto world. The CEO of crypto wallet and investing app Abra came out against it. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse also piled on by saying that the JPM coin misses the point of crypto. However, Reddit's Alexis Ohanian was somewhat more open-minded about the move. For him, the JPM coin is a sign of real innovation after speculators were driven out of the crypto scene by all of the hype, leaving room for more interesting things. The broader crypto community have greeted the news with a mixture of confusion and derision. Confusion because the JPM coin was labeled as a cryptocurrency, when it doesn't actually meet any of the definitions of a crypto. It is not permissionless and it would not work on a public network. The move has been met with derision because the JP Morgan CEO has consistently come out against crypto, at one point calling it a fraud, which is interesting because the very reason crypto was created was the fraudulent activity perpetrated by big banks like JP Morgan. We spoke to Rolling Stone journalist and author of Griftopia, Matt Tabby, about Diamond, JP Morgan, and the 2008 banking crisis. 
JP Morgan Chase was one of a small handful of big um, commercial and investment banks that was a major player in the subprime mortgage crisis. Um, they eventually ended up settling uh, for about $9 billion um, <clears throat> over charges of various charges relating to subprime mortgage securities fraud. Chase emerged from all this, not just getting away with everything that it had done, but also much bigger and more powerful than it ever had been before. And Jamie Dimon, the, the legend around him grew that, that he was um, tough and uh, ambitious, but, uh, but also smart and, and, and was competently running a company that was making lots and lots of money. Well, I think like a lot of these people, the, the legends that precede them um, are misleading. Jamie Dimon had it both ways. There's testimony that in private, he was telling his people to get out of these investments as quickly as possible, really early in the game, like well before 2008. But meanwhile, publicly, when, when asked about these things, you know, he basically said, you know, we were a victim like everybody else. You know, I think th these guys are often given credit for being smarter than, than um, they, they really are. I would, I would think that if they lent their name to it, it would probably be a, be a solid product anyway. I think in terms of, uh, you know, consumer product, they've, they've been a pretty decent company. They, ha they haven't had the same kinds of problems that like Wells Fargo's had, for instance. But, um, but that'll be interesting to see if they, if they jump, jump in on, on that front. Coinbase announced last week that it was acquiring blockchain data analysis startup Neutrino. The biggest and most prominent exchange in the U.S. celebrated, bagging that the public was now safer for everyone because Neutrino would be able to track criminals and terrorists. There was just one small problem. The same tech used to track criminal and terrorist activity to help the public could also be used to track journalists and help repressive regimes. Current members of the recent hire, Neutrino, did exactly this. They were part of Hacking Team, who allegedly broke international laws by selling Italian spyware to authoritarian governments, who were then able to keep a close eye on journalists, activists, and any group speaking out against repression. The Hacking Team apparently sold spyware to the Saudi enforcement group responsible for the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. In addition to this nonprofit, Reporters Without Borders labeled them as one of the top five enemies of the internet. Ironically, this hacking team were hacked themselves, revealing a slew of shocking email exchanges. Neutrino's CEO, Giancarlo Russo, former CEO of Hacking Team, signed off emails with the fascist slogan, Boya Kimola. As soon as the Neutrino team's past transgressions came to light, there were calls on social media to cancel Coinbase, with many users threatening to delete their accounts. Although no one defended the acquisition, there were calls for a more measured approach. Ari Paul, for example, essentially arguing in a series of tweets that Coinbase was not too big not to work with. Coinbase did issue a response admitting knowledge of Neutrino's members past, but stood by the startup as having the best tech for its users. Although the revelations are shocking, it is unsurprising that a major corporation would have no qualms about getting involved with less than savory characters. And yet it is still disappointing that Coinbase has the same disregard for ethics as any major bank. Facebook will reportedly launch its own native cryptocurrency within the first half of 2019. According to information leaked by the company's employees to the New York Times, the tech giant is working on the native token while planning its future listing with a number of crypto exchanges. The leak seems to confirm rumors previously reported by Bloomberg in December, according to which Facebook was developing its own cryptocurrency, whose function would be mainly transferring money on the Facebook-owned messenger platform, WhatsApp. The product was reportedly going to be tested in India, which, according to World Bank data, is the world's top recipient of remittances. As Facebook employees told The Times under conditions of anonymity, Facebook's coin will be a stable coin pegged to a number of fiat currencies. The tech giant is currently working on the integration of WhatsApp with his other two messaging services, Messenger and Instagram. Once the integration will be complete, the Facebook coin will potentially reach the combined 2.7 billion people who use the three services each month. According to the New York Times sources, over 50 engineers have been working on the development of the cryptocurrency, which is taking place in high secrecy. So much so that the team has been given an office with special key card access to make it inaccessible to other company employees. It is still not exactly clear why Facebook would use blockchain for its new payment system, as the technology's decentralized nature would limit the company's control over it. This episode is sponsored by Trade Santa. 
Trade Santa is a cloud-based trading bot. Set it up in less than two minutes, trade multiple pairs, choose between long and short strategies, use tech analysis indicators, and see your results in real time. Trade Santa works 24-7 to get you the profit you set. The platform is already integrated with Binance, Bittrex, Bitfinex, and HitBTC. The link is in the description below. So guys, what do you think? Should everyone cancel Coinbase? Or on the other hand, could Ari Paul be right? Are they really just too big of an entity to be ethically compromised? Let us know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hodl. Cointelegraph, like, subscribe, and hodl.